Hey guys, how's it going? Today I'll be going over a fundamental lead code problem, and that's course schedule. And in this problem, you're given a total of num courses starting from index zero, as well as a list of lists called prereqs. And in the prereqs list, each sub list has two elements, a sub i and b sub i. b sub i represents the course you have to take before you take a sub i. So that's the prerequisite. And this problem is really a fundamental graph problem. So if you were to draw this out, so for this example, we have two nodes starting from index zero. So we have zero and one, and we have our prerequisites. And our, what you'll notice is that the prerequisites is basically just our edges. So if you were to draw an edge from zero to one, since we know that zero is the prereq, it has to be pointing towards one. And we see that the output should return true, and we know this is a valid configuration. But if we go to example two, and we were to draw this out, we have zero, one, and then we have an edge that looks like this, as well as an edge that looks like this. And as you can see here, there's a cycle, so we'll never be able to complete our courses because one prerequisite is also a prerequisite to itself. So what this problem is basically asking is, is there a cycle in this directed graph? So let's look at a more interesting problem. And how do we find out if there's a cycle or not? And the way we're going to do it is DFS. There are a lot of different ways to do it, but the simplest is DFS. So we can do a DFS and we can mark the nodes that we've visited as true or in the current path. So we have we can have a dictionary with the key being the node and the value being true or false. And true basically represents that it's in the current path. And if that doesn't make sense, I'll explain and it will start to make sense. So if we start at node zero. We can mark it as true for visited. And then now we have two choices, whether we go to one or two, let's just choose one. We mark that as true. And then we go to three, we mark that as true. And then we go to four. And then we've exhausted all our paths at this point. So then we propagate back, we backtrack up, and we mark these as false. Now, we basically explore this path, but now we have another path we got to explore, and that's down to two here. So then we mark this as true, and then we get to three. We see it's already marked as false, so then we've already done this computation, and we have exhausted all our paths now, and we know that this configuration is valid. So in this example, obviously, we found out that there is no cycle, but what if there were? So what if there was an edge going from four to zero? So let's run through the algorithm again. We'll start at zero, and we mark this as true for being in the current path, true, true, true. And then once we get to four, we have, we try to go to zero, but we see it's already marked as true, hence there is a cycle, this configuration is invalid. So one interesting thing to note here is the number of courses doesn't have to equal the number of prereqs or edges. So for instance, if the num courses were five instead of four, we could have this node five with no incoming or outgoing edges. So the time and space complexity for this problem is both n times m, where n is the number of courses and m is the number of prereqs for each course. And in terms of time, this makes sense because you have to loop through every course and every prereq for each course in the worst case. And for the space complexity, we have to build our adjacency list. So it's n times m space. So first step is to actually build the adjacency list. I'm using default dic here. So basically what a default dictionary is in Python, if a key hasn't yet been initialized, it will go ahead and initialize it. And this basically makes the code a lot cleaner and it avoids running into a key value not found exception. And this is the visited dictionary and the key for this the keys for this visited dictionary will be the nodes themselves 
and the values will either be true or false. If it's false, that means it's been visited and no cycle has been detected. If it's true, that means we're currently visiting it and it's in the current path. So let's actually do our DFS here. We first check to see if we've already visited it. If we have, then we return whatever values in the dictionary. And here is where we mark off the node as being in our current path. And then we call the DFS. We go deeper into the DFS by calling it on our neighbors. And we see here if DFS neighbor return true. So basically what this means is a loop has been detected. So DFS, this function will return true if there's a cycle. So otherwise we'll get to this point and at this point basically it means that we've gotten to a point where there are no more outgoing edges and then we mark it as false and then we backtrack and we explore our other options. And we basically call this DFS function for every node in our course. So we loop through every node in our num courses. We call the DFS if DFS node. So if there's been a cycle detected, we return false. Otherwise, we return true. That's how we know our configuration is valid and there are no cycles.